<clears throat> so the graph is something like this that this is x is equal to minus 2 and this is x is equal to 4 this is the y axis this is the x axis the graph goes like this like this what is this is it increasing or decreasing De increasing okay, okay. there's a point one in between minus two and four the graph goes. is this increasing or decreasing here this is increase decreasing it is decreasing it is going like this above no that is increasing first and then and then decreasing okay and what is here decreasing so won't you say that x between 1 to x greater than 1 just you will say x greater than 1 it is de in decreasing except you can't take x is equal to 4 because it is an asymptote i hope i think there is some option like that Oh yeah, x greater than 1, x is not equal to minus 4. x is not equal to 4. 4, yeah, sorry, 4, yes, that often is there. Yeah. So, this is the decreasing part. If you try to see the graph, this portion is decreasing and this portion is decreasing. Before that, both portion was increasing. This portion is increasing and this portion is Yes, sir. So, should I stop sharing? Yeah, yes, sir. I can't screen share if you don't stop. Okay, what is the value of k in the function? This, if its graph passes through the point 2, comma 4.2. So, it is not a difficult question. How can you do this question? So, first, uh, do we substitute to x as 2? Yes. And then we find k. And what will be fx? fx is y now. What is yeah. y? y is 2. y is 2? x is 2. Sorry, 4.2. 4.2, yeah. Then find the value of k. So I got 4 plus k by 5 is equal to is equal to 4.2. Yeah, so solve it. Okay, equals 17. Okay.
what is the x intercept how do you find x intercept when um uh, x equal sorry y equal zero yeah when will be so, y zero so uh, uh so it'll be one by three x minus four equals zero okay So it'll be uh so is it zero or there is no zero x intercept? Yeah, there is no x intercept. You can't get this as zero. This can yeah. never be zero. Okay. Is the y intercept so this one that will be x will equal zero yes so will it be zero yes Here is the function x minus 4 by 2x minus 6 increasing. What would you do? So, uh, if it was from calculus, you would have to find its derivative, right? But it is not from calculus, it is from functions. So, here you will have to draw the graph. Okay. How do we draw the graph? Should I tell? Yes, Doctor. Sir, is it uh, X is greater than two? But there's no two. It is greater than two. Why it would be x greater than two? How have you drawn drawn the graph? Just cross check or show me here. Uh, the function was x minus four upon two x minus six. This was the function, huh? Yes, sir. So x minus four by two into x minus three. 
what are the steps involved in order for to find the graph how will you proceed what are the things which you have to see first we find uh we do the rest the poll um don't we take the reciprocal first i will take the reciprocal that was about transformation. We are not doing any transformation here. That was you are seeing from one by x. We will start, right? Yes, sir. Okay, just start that too. Also, it is okay. So write it as x minus three minus one by two into x minus three, and it will become one by two <coughs> minus one by two x minus three. So this is sort of minus 1 by 2, x minus 3 plus 1 by 2. So this way, if you want to do this, is also a way. Now, 1 by x graph, we all know. This is 1 by x graph. Okay. Yeah. Minus 1 by x. Is the opposite. Opposite. <laughs> Minus 1 by x. Now minus 1 by 2 x. So that will actually shrink 2 times along the y axis. So as such, you won't be able to dis dis distinguish, but you will just understand that this has got shrinked along y axis. Like this. And then minus 1 by 2 x minus 3. So this has got shifted by three units along the x-axis. So this is x is equal to three. So the graph now goes like this, this, and this. So this is y is equal to minus one by two into x minus three. Now we come to the final graph. We add half. When you will add half, this will shift half units upward. So y is equal to half line is here and x is equal to 3 is the vertical asymptote here and this shifts half unit upward so it goes like this it goes like this so this is this final graph so it is increasing till 3 x less than 3 minus infinity to no it is increasing everywhere here also it is increasing so except at 3, it is increasing everywhere. 3 is a vertical asymptote. Okay. So if you want to write this, you can write this also. Is there any option like this? In increasing everywhere except... So what option? <clears throat> x, yeah. is, x is greater than 3? Hmm? X is greater than three yards there. No, everywhere it should be. Show me the options. <coughs> Except at three. This A option is there, no? X belongs to real number. X, X is not three. equal to three. Okay. X three is not included. Otherwise, all the values. Okay, so do you want to write that one? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll write that. Okay, so I'll just share. <coughs> you can see how step by step from one graph to another graph we have moved. And finally, we have arrived at the final graph.
Alles klar. Good answer. Okay. <sighs> Which the function has a domain consisting of real numbers? Okay, so you have to find the domain and yeah. find out that which of these following functions have domain as all real numbers. So one by one, you will start finding the domain. So here, what do you think that which value should not be in the domain? In any of these rational functions, what what you have to analyze first, which value should not be in the domain? What is the principle behind it? So x plus twenty five won't be there. Why? Uh, because of the identity. Identity means because it shouldn't be a square minus b square. No, no, it's nothing like that. No, this would be something like this. No? Domain means it should be defined over all the real numbers. This is what it is saying. Now you have first one, 1 by x square plus 25. Another one, 1 by x square minus 25. Next one is 1 by... 1 by x minus 25. 1 by x plus 25. So what I just want to know that the possibility of the denominator becoming zero makes it undefined. Is it so? <clears throat> yes, sir. If the denominator becomes zero, then it will become undefined. So here, can the denominator be zero at any point? No, sir. Yes, at minus 25, it will be zero. If you take x as minus 25, how? Put x as minus 25. Then it will be 0. Then y will be equal to 0? No, denominator will be 0. y will be undefined. So, in domain here, whole real number but not minus 25, can we say? Yeah. Here, when this will become 0, for x is equal to 25. Is it so? Yep. So domain is real number except 25. Here you can't take minus 25. Here you can't take 25. Is it okay? Yeah. Let us come to this one. When this becomes zero, uh, when x square minus 25 is zero, when x square is equal to 25, so x is equal to 5 or minus 5. Yeah. So for x is equal to plus minus 5. So here is the, <coughs> the domain. Yes, sir. It will be real number except minus 5 and 5. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Here you can't take minus 5, also 5, because both of them will be making this denominator 0. So the function will be undefined. So it cannot be in the domain. Now this first one I'm doing last because this is the answer. Can this x square plus 25 be zero? It can never be zero. Because if you want to make it zero, you will say that x square is equal to minus 25. But any real number, when you will square it, it cannot be minus 25. 
it cannot be negative. So x square plus 25 is not equal to zero anywhere. So here domain is real number, whole real number. You have not to eliminate anything. <coughs> so this is your answer. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. So in rational function, if you want the domain, then you should make the denominator not equal to. So the answer is x minus, sorry, plus 25, right? x squared plus 25. Okay. <laughs> have, you, have you got it? No? How we have to do this? So it should not be equal to, because over here we, it's not equal to minus 25. Yes. And domain is a real number yes in other places some value is there for which it is becoming zero here there is no value okay yeah done sir Which which function has a horizontal asymptote of i is equal to 2 by 3? i is equal to minus 2 by 3, okay? So how do we find horizontal asymptote? First, what is the condition to find horizontal asymptote? I'm just revising it for you, but you will give the answer to me. So if the degree of numerator divided by degree of denominator and both the degree are actually same same degree that is the highest power is same in all the options you have given that same degree linear in numerator linear in denominator so there is a horizontal asymptote now what is that horizontal asymptote so that is y is equal to a by b where a is like if you take it as ax to the power n so on as the numerator and bx to the power n so on as the denominator so this is the rational function 
and we take a by b, y is equal to a by b as the horizontal asymptote. Now, using this concept, which we did earlier also, can you tell me which one of them has minus 2 by 3 as the horizontal asymptote? Uh, is it two X plus three by six X plus one? Two X plus three by six X plus one. One. So what will be A by B here? Sorry, sir. What will be A by B? Uh, what is A? 2x plus 3. This everything is not a. I think 1. 1 is a. How? The coefficient of the highest power. What is the coefficient of the highest power? 2. Divided by what is b? 6. It will become 1 by 3. It is not the required <sighs> one. They are asking minus 2 by 3. So I think, yeah, it's 4x minus 4x plus 3 by 6 plus 1. Yeah, that is fine. Okay. Which function has a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 3? How do we get vertical asymptote? The denominator, right, sir? Hmm. So... So is it C? Yes, it is C. Which of the following has a has a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to C? Does it a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero? What is y equal to zero line on the x-axis? Yeah, so x-axis is the asymptote here. So. So then it will be all, right? Yes, it will be all. Yeah. Because all of them are basically of the form 1 by x. <clears throat> all can be obtained from 1 by x just by shifting. Okay. <laughs> 
So shouldn't we calculate this? So to first simplify this, factorize the numerator, factorize the denominator, and see what can be done. What are the factors of numerator? What are the factors of denominator? Sir, so first you have to x square plus 9x plus 20 equals 0, right? No, before doing any such thing, you have to factorize the numerator into linear factors and factorize the denominator, both of them. After factorizing this, see what is obtained, then proceed further. Because it is, it may not be the simplified form. So you have to simplify here. So, so it's, I think it's, Isn't it? Uh, Can you do middle term splitting? Sorry, sir. Middle term is splitting. Can you do? For the denominator, right, sir? As well as for the numerator. Okay, I'll do that. So the draw done. So yes, roots for x of the numerator is minus five and three. And what is the factors of the numerator? Yeah, that's minus 5 and 3. Numerator is x plus 5 into x minus 3. This is the factor? Yeah. And denominator? Uh, x plus 4 and x plus 5. So here, can you see something which can be get cancelled? x plus 5. So when you cancel it, what is the condition there? X is not equal to 5. X is not equal to minus 5. Okay. Because X plus 5 cannot be equal to 0. In such situations, what we call it as? Whole. It is not an asymptote. It is a whole. Because it is in the numerator also, denominator also. If it was only in the denominator, then it was a vertical asymptote. So it is not a vertical asymptote. Are you getting the difference? Yes, sir. <coughs> so it's false. Yeah. <sighs> Mm. 
which one is wrong? Fourth one. Zero. Zero. If you put x is equal to zero, you'll get two now. How you get mark zero? If you put x equal to zero, what will you get? If I didn't also cross check, I thought you saw it right. It will be minus three by minus three. So it will be, so be plus minus one. Three. Yeah. Yeah, so. it was just a careless mistake, otherwise, all of it. Conceptual questions are all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Should we start this? <laughs> 